Now can we translate that? Can we find the well linear part of the Taylor series? Of Taylor approximation, uh, well, of Taylor series for F. Does that make sense? Can we write down Taylor series for that function? What should it be? How should we even start? So f of d capital D L is equal to what's the first term of Taylor series? The constant. The constant term. So it is f of d one capital D one L one. Now what's the next term? But we all know what that is, and we all know how to compute it. What can we say about the next term? The linear term. Well, one of its factors is going to be L minus L1, or well, D minus D1, big D minus D1. Okay, yeah. so we have to think about the differences, right? D minus D1, capital D minus capital D1, L minus L1. And all those differences will have to show up in degree one. Yes, one. So how can they possibly show up there in degree one? And how to how to figure out that exactly? Well, let's try to Let's try to reduce that as much as possible to the functions of one variable. So the f is actually, well, the value of f is, is going to be a pair. So f of d d l is actually a pair as f and avoid buckling. And the output of f is a pair of numbers. Now these are numbers. Now we are safe having one variable to take care of. But each of these two numbers depend on three variables. Now can we think of a Taylor approximation for one of them? Let's say safety factor of D capital D L should be what? Safety factor of D1, capital D1, L1, the constant term, plus, plus something about the differences. And D minus D1, and then capital D minus capital D1, and finally L minus L1. So those must be in degree 1. So they have to have some coefficients. Don't you believe those must be partial derivatives? Because when you look at this equation, what's the meaning of this coefficient? It's the rate of change of the function SF with respect to D. That's exactly what it is, right? If you pretend SF depends on D linearly, then the coefficient is the rate of change. And that rate of change is the derivative of this number with respect to that number. And everybody knows what it is. Okay, so this is the partial derivative of safety factor with respect to D. 
What do you expect that partial derivative to be? Well, that's going to be a function. Right? A function of all three variables possible. And what you need here is a number. So you have to evaluate that at some point. And that point should be D1, capital D1, L1. So that's exactly the, well, a number that can be used in this Taylor approximation. And then coefficient with this capital D term is, again, partial derivative of safety factor with respect to capital D evaluated at D1, capital D1, L1, and also here, partial of with respect to L at the same point. So now we have translated that concept of Taylor series into well, partial, right? We still need to take care of avoid buckling. But avoid buckling has the same expression. It's just longer. Well, it's of the same length. Uh, so So let me make it, let me try to make it here. Uh, I'm approximating these two functions using those Taylor series. And so what I have is, again, a pair of safety factor at E1, capital E1, uh, L1, plus the partial of safety factor with respect to little d at d1 capital d1 l1 times d minus d1 plus two more linear terms these two and then avoid buckling is going to be approximately avoid buckling at d1 capital d1 l1 a constant term plus some linear terms, so the partial of avoid buckling with respect to little d evaluated at d1, little d1, l1 times d minus d1 plus two more terms with those partial derivatives. 